This episode sponsored by Go to Assist Express. Hi, this is Andy McCaskey from STR News for the Tech Podcast Network at CES 2010. This is uh, one of the most exciting interviews that you're going to see. This is the MakerBot. Really don't need to introduce Bree Pettis, but I will. And you tell us about MakerBot. Okay, so. MakerBot Industries creates this machine. It's the MakerBot Cupcake CNC, and it's a 3D printer you can have on your desktop. It's affordable, it's open source, and <clears throat> you put it together as a kit, and then it makes things for you. And not only that, since you've put it together, that means your service contract's pretty inexpensive. Yeah, you don't have to pay somebody you know, 2,500 bucks a day to come out and screw things in. You, you know how it works, because you put it together, and so when you need to tune it up, you can just, you know exactly which nut to tighten. Yeah. So in addition, to You've got a community that surrounds us as well. Tell me about that. So right now there's 500 machines in the wild. There'll be another 150 at the end of this month in the wild. And we, we've got a community of people on a list. And if you have a problem, you just let people know. Or if you have something that you're excited about or you want to share about, the community is right there supporting you and getting excited about it with you. So the blue LEDs uh, come with it as uh, standard equipment? <laughs> no, everybody customizes their own. Some people paint them. I put these LEDs kind of like under lighting on. Oh, there's a steampunk uh, component too. You got to pimp your bot. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, let's run through and just uh, for, for sure. people who aren't familiar with the with the whole concept, we can start with that and then some of the details. So the first thing you can do is you can either design or download an object. We have a, 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 a community called Thingiverse where people upload and share their design files. You can just download them if you're not a big designer person. There's a lot of files on there. I downloaded this dragon head and I'm printing it out right now. The way and the way this starts is, uh, it starts off as this ABS plastic. This is the same material that Lego's made out of. Very light. And it's, this is a pound of material. You can make a lot of things with this. And this costs 10 bucks, so it's not very expensive either. This comes up here and then goes in here. There's a very high torque, low RPM, 2 RPM motor here that's pulling it in. And then it gets heated up here in this heater barrel. And then this X, Y stage moves around, and it builds it up layer by layer. And when it's all done, you've got an object. Here's Tom York's head. Here's a nice little chalice here. And uh, that's Walt Disney's head. This is one of my favorite objects. This is a whistle that uh, a user named Zago in Germany, he designed it and shared it. Within half an hour, people around the world had printed it out. Like, if you. It's a 3D object that was distributed in under an hour worldwide. Like, that's as close as you get to teleportation. Yeah, ab absolutely. Now, I notice you've got, you've got a wood frame here. This is kind of strange. You know, we originally started prototyping in wood, and we were thinking maybe we'll do it in uh, acrylic at the end, you know, when we're done, so it's really nice and clear. But what we found is that wood is a fantastic material for DIY projects, because you can, with acrylic, you screw something in, and it's got the binary fail. You screw it in too far, crack, that part's toast. With wood, it's very forgiving, and it's also super modifiable and hackable. You can drill into it, you can stain it, you can paint it, you can make it yours. And so we, we ended up prototyping in wood and just sticking with it, because it was just such a great medium. So now you've got all the controllers, electronics mounted on the outside here. Yeah, we did this because this is uh, we wanted people to have access and to understand how everything works. So what we've got here is we've got the motherboard, which is where it's got an SD card. This is actually not hooked up to a computer now. It's printing autonomously from the card. And then these uh, rainbow cables go to each of the stepper drivers, which are two amp stepper drivers. And these go to the stepper motors. And there's a stepper motor here, which is the Z, which goes, makes it go up and down. There's one under here, which is the X, which makes it go left and right. And there's one in the back here on the actual XY stage that goes forward and back, that's the why. In the early days, did people attempt to bring in their own surplus components for the design? Yeah, we actually grew out of a project called the RepRap Project, and that's a very, uh, that's a project that's, that there's lots of different designs, they just came out with a new one, and everybody modifies it, that's, that's if you're into digging out stepper motors out of, print, out of old printers and you have a few months to spare, Get, your, get into the RepRap project, because it, it's really cool. It's a, that's a project where people are making robots 
that are, will self-replicate. And so the problem with that is you need a robot to make your robot, but if you've got a friend who has a MakerBot, MakerBot can actually print out one of those, a robot that can print out more robots. So it's kind of, oh yeah, yeah, we get very sci-fi very quickly here. Yeah, oh, I can, can see that. And, and then the, the other thing, though, is that by having a kit, Yep. You have um, um, the pre-qualified parts. You have you have known levels of quality, yep. and a lot of benefits. What what is the the cost of of the uh, device itself? So it costs nine hundred and fifty for the kit. That comes with everything in six pounds of plastic, one pound of white, and five pounds of black. And um, we have a, a pared down version that's seven hundred and fifty that doesn't come with a power supply or any of the cables or and not as much of the plastic. Only a pound of plastic. What's the assemble time to put together the, uh, the, the high-end version? Oh, you want a weekend with a friend to put it together, and then probably another evening or so to tune it up, get it printing just right. What sort of software do you use for the design of, of the objects themselves? You can use any 3D object software to design it, anything you want. Um, a lot of people use Blender because it's open source and free. Uh, I like to use SketchUp because it's super easy. It's a little bit harder to extract an STL file out of it. Um, but you can really, and then you can, if you have money to spend, you can spend a lot of money on, an, on a CAD program if you want. And there's some really cool ones out there, but we like to keep it free and open source. Yeah, you can spend a lot of money. We could also spend a lot of time. I could talk with you for another half hour, but this has really been great. Where can people go to find more information about MakerBot? Okay. If you want more information about MakerBot, just go to MakerBot.com. And if you want to check out some of the things that people have made with the MakerBot, go to Thingiverse.com and check out some of the things the community's put together. That's absolutely fascinating, and I know that a lot of folks are going to be very interested in following up as well. I'm Andy McCaskey for STR News and the Tech Podcast Network at CES 2010. Be easier with GoToAssist Express, an easy and secure remote support solution purpose-built for individuals, small businesses, and professionals who need to support clients. With the click of your mouse, start a support session. Your client simply enters the code you give them on the fastsupport.com website. With their permission, you have the same access to their computer that you have of your own. You can examine programs, check and modify control panel settings. GoToAssist Express gives you full access to their desktop. Need deeper access? Run the GoToAssist Express diagnostic application to get a system summary, application list, processes, programs that start when the computer starts, network connections, devices, services, along with installed applications and much, much more. Easily send and receive files back and forth between your and your client's computer. Have another support request come in and need to do two support sessions at the same time? You can run multiple support sessions with GoToAssist Express. Included is an interactive chat client. As you can see, the menu bar of the GoToAssist Express gives you everything you need to do online support. To try GoToAssist Express right now, free for 30 days, you must visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. That's gotoassist.com slash techpodcast for free trial.